All right, we will get started. Did you guys have a good conference? It's a biased audience, like I always say. <laughs> the ones who didn't <laughs> have not stuck around. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, just wanted to thank everyone for coming in and making this a great experience. Uh, I think the speakers, again, everyone did a fantastic job in, you know, keeping the audience engaged. I know Woody had a challenge during his first session, but he kept <laughs> going, uh, and people really appreciated that. So, you know, the, I think the feedback generally from the sessions has been very positive, and uh, I want to thank all the speakers for doing a wonderful job traveling all the way. Uh, the volunteers did a fantastic job making sure the sessions were running on time. Uh, I think that's again something we really take pride in in terms of, you know, keeping the time and not letting the whole thing snowball. So I think uh, everyone did a fantastic job. And last but not the least, all the uh, attendees, I think you guys, you know, supported us, made sure even when things were not perfect, you kind of uh, took it as your own conference and tried to run it, so kind of greatly appreciate it. And of course, our wonderful sponsors who've uh, helped us put this event together, want to uh, thank them as well. I think we have folks from Zoho, uh, Lean Wisdom, ThoughtWorks, uh, and PM Power Consulting. So again, thank you all for the wonderful support uh, in supporting this conference. Uh, again, I keep saying we don't do a lot for the sponsors, but hopefully, uh, you know, you did get some value and would continue to support the conference in the coming year. Uh, and of course, like I've said, next year is the 20th year and everyone's expecting, you know, something spectacular. So I was suggesting that we do the conference outside India. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> A lot of speakers come to India because they like the Indian food, the Indian people, and the Indian tradition and things like that. So that's going to get missed. Uh, so we'll keep that. Uh, so I think, again, uh, the plan is to keep the next conference again in March uh, time frame. The, that, that's originally when Agile India used to be running. So we moved it this year for a short, uh, on a short notice, but we want to move uh, so that we can continue it in March and then there's some predictability for people saying yes, March is when the event is and they can plan things around it. Uh, before I get into announcing some winners of some contests and stuff like that, if there are any questions uh, still unanswered for you folks, uh, I know someone was asking me uh, how do I become a volunteer for the conference. Uh, so every year when we announce the conference, we, uh, you know, call out for program committee members, and we also call uh, for volunteers uh, who can come help us run the event. Uh, so since you've all been part of this event, for sure you will get an email from our side. Uh, you'd also, if you're following us on any social media, you'd also see it over there. Uh, so for sure you would kind of know uh, when the next event is happening, and uh, we would be doing the call for uh, the program committee, the call for proposals as well. This time we had very little time, so we couldn't actually do the call for proposals. We ended up uh, selecting speakers mostly from our own past experience. But uh, you know, next year we'll go back to using uh, you know the open submission and doing uh, call for proposals from there. Uh, so you know, you have opportunity to participate in the conference on multiple fold. One is by submitting proposals to speak at the conference, being part of the program committee to help select, give feedback to the speakers, improve their proposals, and lastly, uh, by volunteering at the conference uh, and helping us run the show and making sure it continues to be a good show for everyone. Cool, so that was one question I think folks had. Any other questions uh, that are not answered yet? Everything's answered? Okay. Uh, I think I uh, just wanted to then quickly announce the winners of, uh, you know, the contest that uh, Lean Wisdom folks were running. Uh, 
so they, I think they had a, a certification voucher uh, worth 50,000 rupees uh, 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 contest running. Uh, yesterday, I think they had two winners, Senthil Kumar from Ford and Rohit from Z Omega. Uh, I don't know if you were around. And uh, today they had uh, Kiran from Pragati Private Limited and Balaji Rao from PP. Uh, these are the two folks that won the contest today. Are they around? Oh, your colleagues, okay. I thought you won the contest. Cool. Did uh, Zoho have any uh, announcements to be made? You've already distributed all the prices and... <laughs> So the enterprise uh, plan for the Zoho Sprints, uh, so if anyone's interested, they can still avail the offer. Cool. All right. Uh, with that, I think there's not much, so we can all go back, continue. Hopefully, you'll take some lessons back from here and come back next year to tell us how that's helped improve things back at your company. Uh, that's one thing that, you know, at least I'm very proud of that every year we hear from people that, you know, they learn stuff from here, they've tried something, they maybe invented some of their own stuff, and then they come back and share that with us. So that's what keeps the community, you know, growing and learning from each other, and we want to keep that spirit going. So would appreciate to, and would love to hear uh, what were your takeaways and, you know, how you've tried to implement them at work. Cool. Uh, does anyone want to share a story from something that they learned and tried, just as an example, from past few years, some lot of familiar faces, trying to put someone on spot. Siddharth? Uh, I mean, while I could share stories from the past, uh, I'd like to share something from this conference, like from yesterday or day before. Uh, Jules had this uh, talk about, uh, uh, particularly way of doing retrospectives and how you can sort of, uh, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> so I didn't know if she was here or not. But she had a very interesting talk about how uh, you could, um, if you want to do a retrospective, how do you move forward? So uh, how do you think about, okay, what is the best possible path that you could? And what is like sort of the worst possible future you could find yourself? Which is a very different way of doing retrospectives from what I had done. And we were in the actual act of doing a retrospective, and uh, uh, my colleagues and I, we actually tried to uh, try Jules technique, and it, I thought it was significant improvement on what we were trying to do before. And um, I, I don't know what will come out of it, but uh, the retrospective that we did was super useful in my opinion. So uh, I mean that, that's the story from day before yesterday. So good evening, folks. Uh, so uh, I'm from Zoho, I'm Kritika. So we've been associated with Agile India since 2018. So the very reason why we do it every year or we try our best to be a part of this event is, you know, irrespective of how many attendees attend the event, it is all about the quality of conversations that you engage with, right? So that has uh, always been great with Agile India. So I'll have to always give the credits for that. So um, that's something that I would like to share with all of you. And also, I really enjoyed uh, Mr. Richard's workshop on team transformation. And I just wanted to share one point about that. Uh, personally, I'm just taking back the team transformation uh, canvas with me. And I want to put into that, that one into practice very desperately because there are a lot of cultural factors that, you know, might have an influence on how you work or how you build uh, a team's emotional intelligence, right? So in India, especially uh, me being from South India, I can very confidently tell that, you know, we have this tendency to romanticize a few things, at the same time normalize a lot of things, right? So we do not talk about 
the personal issues or issues at workplace very openly or very transparently. We don't do it. You know, most of the teams or most of the businesses in the corporate culture, it's mostly work driven or output, output driven, right? So you just tend to overlook a lot of things like, you know, it could be your mental health that is having, uh, that is just putting you into a bad light that day, or it is just not your day. But, you know, you are in this constant uh, frame of mind where you think, oh, what is my manager going to think about me? Or uh, is it going to put me into the bad light if I'm just coming up all by myself in the public or whatever it is, right? So this specific workshop that Mr. Richard did, it is all about, you know, showing you and, uh, you know, I would not want to say the system is hypothetical or something. I really wish we live in this ideal world where we are, f you know, we are just filled with all non-judgmental, healthy, you know, corporate uh, folks where you just tend to discuss issues very transparently because we emote in different ways. If it's just not your day, people emote in very different ways. So one could be an introvert or one could be an extrovert or one could be an ambivert. You never know, your peer wouldn't know how would you actually signal it out, you know? Not everyone is very vocal about what they think. So that specific workshop was something like, ah, this could work, man. So, you know? So I just really want to uh, put that into practice, and I would highly recommend uh, teams here, or, you know, I'm just here to just spread that word, or uh, I'm just here to recommend that workshop to more people. So if at all, if you have not been a part of that workshop, just, you can just go check out the sli slides or you know, take a printout of that uh, canvas and just uh, share it with your team. So we'll have to do it on a routine. And we must normalize speaking up for ourselves, actually, at workplaces. We must normalize talking about mental health issues at workplace. We must normalize being not OK at work. And we must normalize. Uh, being okay with not being so productive all the time. And we must normalize uh, having failures as well, right? It's, it's not going to be always our day. It's not good, gonna be always our time, right? And I think when the world starts normalizing that, it's gonna be everyone's day, right? And with that note, I would just like to sign off and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kritika. Very well said. And we've become an evangelist for Richard's session, so that's great. Thank you. Very well said. Hi, everyone. My name is Usha. Um, the one common theme which I've heard from many speakers is the power of small improvements, tiny habits. So this that I've heard in the form of different messages reminds me of an incident when my son was small. Now my son is about 14 in the 10th standard. When he was about two to three years old, we would often try to get him to swim um, in, in the kid's pool. He was very afraid of water. We tried so many things, coaxing him uh, or giving him some motivation, didn't work. Once we had gone to a resort in Kerala for a vacation and uh, an idea struck us. We just told him, this is just a big tub. He used to love uh, taking bath at our tub at home. So an idea struck us. We just told him, this is a huge tub. Just jump in. And he jumped in. Su very surprising for us. Now when I hear of this power of tiny things, 1% improvements and all that, it, uh, also, it reminds me of that incident that make the change look small. Going through any transformation, make it look like those series of tiny things and small improvements. And this is one takeaway I'm going to take from this conference. To break down any change, any transformation into those series of tiny things, small improvements, towards making people enjoy the change that we, they are going through. Thank you. Thank you, Harish. I first time met Naresh in 2006 uh, as part of Agile India 2006. Uh, and since then, I've been frequent into these conferences. So one thing, each one of us put, your, you know, put us into that uh, little spot. And you have to arrange an event within your organization. How does that feel? What effort it takes? 
It takes good amount of effort. A lot of us um, want somebody to do it for us. And now think the amount of massive effort that narration team, every volunteer, every speaker, every reviewer puts in to make this flawless learning experience for us. Can we have a good round of applause for years of work that this three set of people are doing? Yeah. Next thing that I would like to also share with all of you is that we all come from very different diversified experiences. And in here, one, the space becomes quite bias-free because we meet people who are from different organizations and might be facing similar challenges that we haven't worded for ourselves. When we listen into those perspectives, it gives us different dimension for dealing with those challenges back into workplace. And that makes workplace lighter, easier in terms of dealing with the Right from the mental space, also the physical engagement, when we reflect into these experiences, not all of us would use every tip of ear, yet it does impact the way we act going forward. That's all. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, anybody else? Hello, everyone. I've been associated with Agile India since 2021, and that was my first virtual conference with Agile India. I was a volunteer. Uh, it was such an experience when I felt included. I also saw the lineup of speakers, the various areas that we were talking about, whether it was technology, product, coaching, consulting. So the diversity and the inclusiveness was something that really attracted me. It also encouraged me to think beyond, get the confidence. So in 2022, I decided to um, you know, send out a proposal and let's see what happens. I got selected and I got to speak as well. And this year, when I think it was December, I was so surprised. I was like, oh, we just had it in November. Now again, it's happening. I said, don't think again. Just book your tickets, buy and come here. And the experience has been fabulous. And what I'm going to take away um, I think one of the things I keep hearing and I wanted to learn was how do you, you know, get to get things done when you have, um, you know, bigger problems when you're working with organizations. And one of my biggest takeaway has been, and multiple speakers have spoken about it in terms of finding those influences, doing those experiments, and um, just go for it. You know, you don't look for the moment. If you find a space, you find those influencers. Those small experiments just go for it. And I think that's going to be one of my biggest experiences or learnings from Agile India 2023. So thank you, the entire team, and uh, thank you. All right, anybody else wants to share? So I, I know and I've been connected with Naresh since 2005. I still very vividly remember when he had come to uh, the MBA college called NMIMS in Mumbai and he was speaking about agility over there and that was very new to me. It was, I think, yeah, in 2005. So, uh, and I was like really intrigued, like what it is, how it is. Then a couple of years later, he conducted a f one of the sessions at NMIMS. It was a two day session. And I still remember the first person that I'm a uh, senior person that's there from the industry, Jeff Pate, and he, he was there that in the, during that time. And uh, it just changed everything for me. And since then, I've been almost like, you know, barring a couple of them. I've been here with him uh, every year. And every year I come, it just surprises me that the kind of people that come over here, the kind of learnings that's brought by all, the kind of speakers that we have got, it's, it's amazing, like, and you know, what we all always say, it's not about one-time effort that's there, it's about the consistency with which these sessions are being organized. So I want to really thank from the bottom of my heart to Naresh that the level of consistency that he has maintained has been awesome. Thank you so much, Naresh. Thank you. This is all now turning into me talk. <laughs> it's supposed to be about what you're taking away from the event, all right? Uh, 
I have been here for the first time uh, in person at Agile India. And last year, I got to uh, attend it online. Um, so from the content point of view, uh, I'm not surprised. And uh, that was the motivator, in fact, to book my tickets and come all the way. Um, in fact, I'm more than happy. I was, it, it, was, it delivered more than what I expected in terms of uh, all the talks that we, I got to attend. And also, all the people I got to connect with. Um, I got to appreciate so much similarity in the industry, so much of the same problems, um, and also uh, some of the experiences of how people do it differently. That's something I really want to take away from my conversations. But from the uh, talks, I started appreciating so much more the importance of psychological safety, uh, about how it starts from me, my point of view, my mindset, and that, that's true in teams, with leaders, everywhere. So yeah, that's my takeaway. Thank you so much. Just want to uh, acknowledge two people who've done a lot of work. I mean, the speakers probably know Natasha. She's been coordinating. So just wanted to. <laughs> it was a nerve wracking experience for her trying to put a physical conference together. Uh, but she's done a fantastic job. All the speakers are very thankful and everybody else for making sure everything ran so smoothly. And Mr. John over there trying to play with his camera. <laughs> so what's interesting, I don't know, many of you know, but John actually did a keynote for us in 2012. Uh, and then, you know, he liked it so much that he's now <laughs> part of the team. Uh, but uh, he flew all the way from New Zealand. He said, there's no way I'm going to miss this. I want to be in person. And so thanks again, John, for everything, like all the videos, the marketing. Uh, it's all John with his experience trying to do the best to spread the word. All right. With that, I think we will bring this to a closure. Thanks again and look forward to seeing you all next year.